I'm recording. So, um, probability, let's start at the beginning. A, um, we're going to do a few definitions and then talk about how to do probability trees and sample spaces and so on. Um, you're also going to learn a lot about uh, how to make good guesses in this chapter. So, um, also, everything that is covered in the first two sections is everything that could possibly be on the ACT for stats. So, once you've gotten through these two sections, then you will be set uh, for ACT. All right, so let's start with a probability experiment. Okay, this is one trial where um, you might get a count or measurement and you record it. Um, one result is called an outcome. This is kind of just definitions. Outcome is a result of a probability experiment. Sample space is all possible outcomes. And a tree diagram is kind of a visual display of the sample space. Okay, so raise your hand if you just wrote down those four definitions and you just wrote them down and didn't think about them at all. It's okay. Okay. Do you guys know what probability is? What is it? Yeah? How likely something is to happen. How likely something is to happen. Oh, Mr. Mink needs me. So. Hey. It's okay, what's up? Justin, go first. Oh, it's right there, my goodness. Stop hiding. Huh? Right <laughs> Stop hiding in the front row, Justin. Yeah, so okay. Just bring it home. Give it to your dad, okay? Okay. So, a probability experiment could be something like this. Um, rolling a dice. Okay. Three, did you know that in a whole bunch of textbooks that um, the word dice is not allowed to be used? Anybody know why? Gambling. Yeah, and gambling is associated with the devil. So they still talk about dice in um, math books, but they call them number cubes because that makes a big difference, right? Because if we're talking about gambling, if you're gambling with number cubes and not dice, no big deal, right? Isn't that funny? It'd be different if they changed, like, the curriculum built on it, but they didn't. They just changed the name. So stupid. Anyway, our book says dice. Just you're wondering. Um, but I did work out of a book that called it number cubes for a very long time. And everybody's always like, what's a number cube? And I'm like, it's a dice. And I'm like, why don't they write that? And I'm like, okay. All right, so uh, here's a probability experiment. I'm rolling a dice. What do you think it's going to be? Four, five, two. Call it. Five, two, two four, five, four, two, one. Six. Three. Oh. Okay. All right. Tell me what this is. Look at the four definitions. Outcome. This is an outcome. A three is an outcome. Everybody understand? Yeah. A three is an outcome. What's my sample space for this? 
two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Specifically, those six numbers are my sample space. Everybody understand? Great. Tree diagram is a visual display of your sample space, which is very helpful when you have more than one event happening. For example, let's say that you um, uh, toss a coin and then roll a die. Okay, now this is something that people get confused with a lot, so we're going to take it nice and slow. What are the options when you flip a coin? Heads or tails? And I want you to write heads on one side and tails over here a little bit. Okay, now how many options are there for getting a dice? Two? Two? Oh, dice? Six. Six. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to branch off as a tree diagram. You're going to branch off of each one six times. One too many. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Okay. So here are my two different options. So how many options are there when you're rolling a dice? Uh, flipping a coin and then rolling a dice. What are how many options are there? Twelve. Twelve. Everybody understand? T say one of the options that I could get. Tails and what? One. Tail one. Okay, that's one option. Tail one. What else? Tail two. Tail two. Everybody understand that I could write this out. I'm not going to make you write all these out every time. I'm just writing it out for your notes right now. You could have tail one through six or heads one through six. <coughs> Twelve options. You can also do something called the count, uh, fundamental uh, counting theorem, by the way, which means that I would say that there are two in the coin and six here, so two times six is 12. Pretty easy. Okay. Uh, next thing, let's try this. Let's say you are purchasing a car. Oh, let's write it down. This is called the fundamental counting principle. Fundamental counting principle says if there are x ways to complete one event and y ways to complete a second event, there are x times y ways for both events to occur. big one. Now, a tree diagram will always work. The problem is that sometimes it is not worth it to make a tree diagram. For example, um, let's say that you're buying a car. Uh, give me three uh, manufacturers that you might want to choose from. Chevy, Ford, Honda. Okay, and these are your three choices. You can get a Chevy, you can get a Ford, you can get a Honda. Okay, and then what kind of car do you want to get? 
Good. No, we're not talking about manufacturers. Oh. We're talking about like type of car. Like the, like the SUV. Sure. OK, so let's say you're looking for an SUV or you're looking for a truck. Or should we just do two? Sedan. A sedan. <laughs> Sedan such an old person sounding word, isn't it? Would you like to go in the sedan? All right. Um, most, a lot of us do. 